This is a Lego Technic motor. I'm Kale Frost, and today we're going to hack it. Now this story begins when Lego sent me the latest Technic range all using the awesome Lego Technic motor. Big thank you for Lego for these amazing sets. And so, of course, the first thing I did was throw away the instructions and lay out the past to get a sense of what I was working with, sit down for a coffee and a bit of a brainstorm, and then I got experimenting. And I set up two cameras to record the experimenting and show you a little bit. I lost the footage from both of them. They just did not work. So here's some footage of my cats instead. And uh, yeah, Let, let's just catch you up to where we are at right now. Or rather, before I catch you up to where, where we are right now, I need to kind of cover off a few things about how the Technic pullback motors work. So you wind them up like this. And you let them go and they spin, right? And I'd recorded more stuff on the technical stuff, but you know what? That's boring. All you need to know is that it spins fast with not a lot of power, which is an engineering problem that will need to be overcome when we go to... Idea number one. Tired of throwing paper planes with your big meaty ham hooks? Well, have I got an idea for you. A paper plane launcher! Now I mentioned the geeky stuff a little earlier because it sets up some of the technical challenges that need to be overcome uh, as part of the design process and there were a lot of challenges. Uh, well anyway, here's the first test, okay? Yeah. Anyway, the easy way to add more power is by doubling the motors. And so that's what we did. And here is the second test. Which, while definitely better than the first, there are still little improvements that needed to be made. So I went back into the studio, also lost all the time lapse of that creation process. So here's more videos of my cats. And I came up with this. The earlier model hadn't had a trigger, this one does. I have tripled up the pullback motors and made the launching loading process a little bit easier. So let's give this a shot. Test number three went. It was a lot of fun, but this is perhaps not the ultimate paper plane launcher. Which brings me back to the technical challenges that need to be overcome. And if this is going to bore you, feel free to skip ahead to here, where I show you design number four and how you can make your own, which overcomes many of the issues here. Uh, yeah, we'll get there. For those who are interested in the technical challenge side though, thank you for sticking with me. And yeah, the basics of the paper plane launcher. The paper plane is held between these two wheels that then spin really fast, launching it. So why has this been proving to be a challenge? With three motors here, that's a lot of potential whoosh force power to be applied to the launch power plane. So where is that whoosh force power being lost to? Now do remember that this is a purest LEGO solution. We are using only official LEGO parts. And let's look at the underlying design. Both wheels, they need to spin at the right direction, in the right direction, at the same speed to launch the plane. With a little bit of grip between them to get a good hold on the plane itself and provide the best possible launch. This design here. It is a design similar to what baseball launching machines use. It's a proven design. And to do it any other way means that we're losing some of that whoosh launch power or not applying it correctly or applying it unevenly or any other number of possible complications that we simply don't want. We just want a nice clean launch, okay? Here's what the gearing looks like. 
turn one of the center gears and the outer gears rotate. It's exactly what we want, except as a purist LEGO solution, we're limited to the LEGO grid. This is what the wheels we've been using look like when they're attached in this position. They're too close. Seen from the side, you can see the bend on the axles. The strain on these axles is where we're losing our potential whoosh force power. We can move them one stud apart, but this now means they're too loose. Yeah, I, I feel like the design is overly complicated and it's time to just strip it back and make it simpler. So I took it back to the drawing board and this, Mark IV, is what I have now. There's some obvious trade-offs here, but it's a lot simpler in its design. It's easier to make, it's easier to set and load, and it's easier to launch. The launcher is not the only part of the design we can change either. We can adjust the paper plane. So I added two icy pole sticks to achieve a better squeeze between the wheels. And this is how it looks in action. And there you have it, version 4, the paper plane launcher. It's okay, but here's how you can make your own and perhaps you can improve upon the design. Let us know in the comments below. Also, I did mention I had some other ideas and I did start pursuing them. I did a bit of experimentation. They look kind of like this. There was a chocolate launcher because I'm sick of using my hand hocks to just kind of put chocolate in my mouth. I wanted to launch them straight in my mouth. That kind of started transmogrifying partway through the process when I found out it didn't launch too well into this little drummer dude. It's still not done yet. That's something for another video. Anyway, this is how you make the paper plane launcher starting now. And uh, yeah, good luck. Hope you enjoy. Hope you love this. Like, subscribe, all those things um, that I meant to say. Anyway, yeah. Cheers, guys. I'm out of here. Hope you enjoy this. Thank you.